Hey friends, we're back at the house, hopefully finishing up all the things that we couldn't take care of earlier in the week. And I'm thinking we're gonna go furniture shopping this weekend and get some of that move-in process started, which is really exciting. But um, I don't have a lot of battery left, so I gotta make this quick. And some of you who have sat through my longer videos recently are probably thinking, thank goodness. So gotta make this quick. Let's talk about shoes. to hiking and backpacking we all know that foot care is one of the most important parts and footwear can make or break a day hike even a week-long trip or longer if your footwear is bad chances are it's gonna be a not very fun trip so recently I've started using barefoot shoes I've been doing a lot of reading listening to podcasts audiobooks stuff like that that just kind of discuss um, barefoot shoes, their benefits, and I don't have the time to get into all of that, but I will leave some links to resources if you're interested in reading up on or learning some more about it in the description. In short, a lot of our shoes end up acting more like a cast and over time will weaken certain muscles in our feet and then weaken muscles that are in our legs that rely on certain muscles in our feet. So I have been testing out some shoes that I found on Amazon and they are by no means like the best product of shoe. The brand is called A Leader or A Leader, um, however you choose to pronounce it. They're meant to look a lot like the Vibram Five Fingers, but the toes are not separated. It's like one big toe box, which is actually pretty wide and the outside um, sole looks like the toes are separated but they're not and I've really enjoyed these I've put about 50 miles into these two long trips and then a day hike and they've held up pretty good they're really dirty now because I took them on a hike uh, like a couple days ago and took them into the river and all of that as far as pros and cons it's really minimal which I love and at first I thought it was gonna be a problem, but the more I hiked in them, the more my feet got used to it. So I've always had a problem with there just being too much cushion and too much going on. I don't necessarily think I've got wide feet, but I have always felt no matter what type of shoe, whether it's a trail runner, a hiking boot, like whatever it is, I've always felt like the shoes just have way too much and it would cause cramping in different areas of my feet. So I was like, let's go as bare minimum plain as I can find for a decent price. And I found these for about 38, maybe $40. And I've been really happy with them. If it's a lot like a water shoe, there is a tongue with this shoe. I know some of them that I've seen don't have the tongue at all. You just kind of slip your foot in. The most of the shoe is comprised of like a mesh. So they dry out fast. I'm sure there's some materials that dry out much faster, but these have really suited my needs with um, backpacking and hiking. They are falling apart a little. So that is a major con is if you want to really put these through the ringer, which I have done, I am not a careful person with my belongings, which is pretty bad, but um, they need to be able to like withstand a lot because I don't tiptoe around rocks and roots. I am a habitual toe stubber. And so I will take out the entire front of the shoe like within the first mile if I'm not careful, which is ridiculous. But this has actually helped with that problem. So there have been a couple times when I've been hiking and I will stub my toe maybe like two, three times in a row. And by like the fourth time, I'm thoroughly convinced that I am going to die because it just hurts so much. Um, but these have actually protected my toes pretty well. I'll show you again the um, sole here that comes up has acted like a really good kind of barrier for when I do hit a root or a rock. And so there's been times when I prepare to die when I stub my toe on something. 
and the pain is not nearly as severe as I was expecting, which has been great. And sometimes just no pain at all. But um, in talking about discomfort with these shoes, at first it was a little uncomfortable. Like my feet ached so much the first like day or two that I used them. But like I mentioned earlier, that's because the shoes I've been using have weakened so many muscles in my feet. So I'm just working out muscles in my feet that have been out of commission for a while. And by my second trip in these, it was totally fine. And also along the lines of pain and discomfort when it comes to these really minimal shoes is you can feel everything underneath you. So rocks, roots, you can feel it when you step on it, but it's not the same as injury pain where it's consistent, it's chronic. If you don't do something about it, there's gonna be further complications. It's not like that. It's just feelings and um, I guess nerve endings being woken up and stimulated that your feet really aren't used to because the shoes that we have have such thick soles and so much protection around your foot that it prevents you from being able to feel those things. So, um, and I think that's part of the strengthening process of those muscles, you'll be less um, likely over time to be bothered by it. At least that's what I've experienced, is my feet just get more used to it and they toughen up um, the more I walk in these shoes. I wouldn't say these will be like your shoes you use for, you know, years to come and you can even get hundreds of miles out of them. But if you want to try a more minimal shoe or a barefoot shoe, but you don't want to make a huge investment in it, these are a fantastic option. And if you try it and you find out that you absolutely hate it and you need a more supportive shoe, then you've only lost like 40 bucks or less. And there's even cheaper options. Um, most of these shoes, I assume, come from the same factory overseas. I bought these ones from another brand and you can see they have a very similar design, just some changes to the material. There's a few features on these that I like a whole lot more, like the inside has a netting, whereas the others just have like this foam sewn in. But again, this has more of a water shoe, not a mesh material, so it doesn't breathe as well, but it has that cushion on the tongue and around the ankle so if you want the minimal shoe but you do prefer kind of that extra cushion then this might be a better one for you and I will put the link to where you can get those ones in the description. So a few other features about these shoes I really liked is there's no laces to tie. It's just this cord that has a little bit of stretch to it, not too much, and you tighten it to however tight you want it to be around your foot and then you use this kind of like um, spring slide closure. But that's been great if I need to make an adjustment while I'm moving, if it's too tight or too loose, I don't have to stop and balance or even take off my pack to readjust laces that I have to tie. I can just kind of give a little pull on the cord to loosen it up or um, pull down on this little closure to you know, tighten it up a little bit and then just keep moving, which has been great. Um, and I think because there's not a really thick lace, there's not as much tension like pulling on different areas of your foot. Cause I don't know about you, but when it comes to laces, sometimes it'll hurt on the top of my foot. Like it's just kind of squeezing or pulling in a wrong way on the top area of my foot. And I haven't experienced that at all with either of these pairs of shoes. And I think I'm gonna give one of the more expensive brands a try. I have tried Zero Shoes and been really disappointed. And that's not to say it may not be good for you, it's just I tried their um, Mesa Trail Runners and went with my regular size, measured my foot and everything, and they were way too small. And they just didn't feel very flexible. They were really uncomfortable, so I returned them. I'm gonna give Vivo Barefoot a try. I really can't wait to hit the trail in those because while these are great, one of the things that I'm concerned about is slipping. So this looks like it's got some good grip. And on rougher surfaces, like certain 
types of rocks, it's great. It does have some good grip. But you know those rocks that have just that very thin film of like plant growth on them? I've almost been taken out by that with this. And if it wasn't for my trekking poles, I would have eaten dirt. It, it was pretty scary for a second there. A couple of times on some recent trips where I think I've got some good footing, I lift my foot and I slip and have to like catch myself. So these don't have the, the type of grip that I really need if I'm gonna be doing stream crossings and there's a potential for slick surfaces, especially if it's been raining. So I'm hoping that the bottoms of the soles with the Vivo barefoot shoes that I have ordered and have looked at will give me that um, security I'm looking for and slip resistance. So yeah, overall, these are a really great option if you just want to try it out and you don't want to lose a ton of money if it turns out to be not for you. I've tried all kinds of shoes. I thought for a while that hiking boots, like the big clunky boots were going to be the right thing and it wound up being the worst out of all the options. I have a pair of Merrill boots that have just been sitting outside the door so long that my husband came in and he's like, babe, you got to do something about these. I'm going to throw them in the trash because there's a family of spiders that has moved in. And I thought he was exaggerating, but no, like there's webs growing out of the shoes, which is a problem. So I got to do something about those. Hopefully this is helpful if you felt like you just can't find a shoe solution for hiking and backpacking, you might want to give barefoot shoes a try. And it does take some getting used to. Like I said, my feet were so sore the first time that I used the shoes, but the more I use them, the stronger my feet get, the more used to it I am. And I honestly don't think I would go back to boots or, you know, those thicker, cushier trail runners. Just these are what I find myself wanting to walk in, hike in. I'm even trying running in them and really enjoying it. It's just seeming like an all around better option for my foot. If you feel like you've been fighting this battle of going through different types of shoes and boots and investing in all these different brands and types of shoes and shapes and all, and you just cannot find what you're looking for, you might want to try minimalist or barefoot shoes and see if that's right for you. I'm glad that I gave these a shot and uh, hopefully you found this kind of helpful. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again next time. Let me live my life in the air. Let my friends in the forest give me shelter up there. And I live my life without cares in the mountains again. Mountains again